Sensational, epic, incredible ball game last night between the Chiefs and the Chargers that goes to Kansas City with this walk-off touchdown in overtime. What a pulsating finish. And it was a reminder that Patrick Mahomes is still Patrick Mahomes on a night where he was hardly great for three quarters and really had some difficulties. He had a tough fumble, a brutal pick, and remember, he threw the ball into the ground on fourth down when a receiver was wide open for a touchdown. Mahomes saved his best for when it mattered the most. The game-winning drive in overtime was sensational with Kelsey dancing and prancing into the end zone. The final drive of regulation was absolutely gorgeous. Down 28-21, 2.19 to go, 8th place, 75 yards, and a touchdown. The Stars came to play on offense in crunch time on a night where the Kansas City Chiefs didn't have a superstar on defense and Chris Jones. Patrick Mahomes' numbers ended up being off the charts. Kelsey and Tyreek Hill as well. I mean, take a look at this. This is when the Kansas City Chiefs have these guys putting up these numbers and you have Andy Reid, it's really all you need. Kansas City was outplayed for three quarters last night. The game finished with Mahomes showing Justin Herbert that it's Mahomes who's a former MVP. Mahomes is a Super Bowl champ. That was a show. That was a statement. The statement being that the Chiefs are the Chiefs and they can win the Super Bowl because of the genius of Patrick Mahomes. No, 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 no. If I'm a Chargers fan, I'm living. I'm living on so many levels. I think Brandon Staley, those words were just damning. I think he, he found it all up last night. I don't know when kicking a field goal and banking three points became taboo. This whole thing is insane. And I don't want to hear, this is what we do? Heck no. Every game is different. Every situation is different. I want to be crystal clear. I'm a huge believer in analytics. I'm a believer in using analytics as a tool to make a decision. It's not the end-all, be-all. You have to factor in emotion and players and the variables. You want to go for it on the first drive of game after a monster, tremendous opening kickoff? Great. Drop pass in the end zone. But not kicking. I mean, come on. At the end of the first half, up four, with a chance to make it a seven-point lead going into the locker room? That's beyond comprehension. That made absolutely zero sense. Because in that situation, at the end of the second quarter, you can't say, well, if you miss, look at the field position. Because the clock was hitting zero. Take the three points. Take the points. Take the emotion, the good vibes, go into the locker room. Jared Cook had just dropped a touchdown on second down, and Justin Herbert got stuffed. It's an inexplicable decision that doomed the LA Chargers. Going forward on fourth down in the third quarter with Austin Eckler? Sure, I'm in favor of that one. But then Josh Kelly fumbling on the goal line? I mean, why is Josh Kelly getting the ball? As the late Marty Schoenheimer once told me, think players, not plays. And in those situations, I need more Austin Eckler. I don't want to hear anyone say that I praise Staley for week three in Kansas City going for it on fourth down. Now I'm killing him. That was needed in week three. Think about the perspective, rightly so, on the Chiefs. Those were the big, bad Kansas City Chiefs, and Mahomes had never lost a September game. The Kansas City offense hasn't been the same in the second half of the season. Of course you can beat them kicking field goals, banking points. There was a golden opportunity to beat the Chiefs, to sweep them, to go into first place in the division, because if you're tied and you sweep them, then you're going to have the tiebreaker, and the Chargers have a relatively easy schedule down the stretch. You blow it by being stubborn and not feeling and understanding the moment. Justin Herbert was making dynamic plays, and it went for nothing. I still love the Chargers, love them to make the playoffs, I still love this team. I love Brandon Staley. I think they can win a playoff game. But relying solely on numbers and not real life cost the Chargers greatly. Mr. Mac Jones all sorts of fired up for the Patriots and the Colts tomorrow night. And that 
is going to be a show. I can't wait to see Mr. Mac Jones be a part of this. This is a great game, great rivalry. I mean, think about throughout the years, Peyton and Brady and Deflategate and Marlon Jackson and Dequell Jackson and Josh McDaniels leaving Indy at the altar. And now, ironically enough, helping make Mr. Mac Jones the Offensive Rookie of the Year favorite. But I think Indy is going to be able to get some revenge here. The Indy defense is absolutely loaded. Jonathan Taylor is playing at an MVP, an Offensive Player of the Year clip behind that Colts offensive line. I love Jonathan Taylor. He's the ultimate blend of power and speed. Now, Bill Belichick, of course, knows this, and Bill is the best at taking away what you do best. But this Patriots defense is unreal. No question about that. However, I have faith in Carson Wentz to make some big-time plays. Under the radar, perhaps, because he has had a couple of mind-numbing throws, Carson Wentz has been really strong this year. Remember, he never got to play against Belichick in the Super Bowl because he got hurt, and obviously Nick Foles won and was able to get it done. I'm obsessed with the Patriots. I've been out of the curve on their greatness this year. But Indy is desperate. They can play with anyone. Give me the Colts to beat the Patriots in a classic on Saturday nights. Tennessee Titans head coach Mike Vrabel talking about his team matching the Pittsburgh Steelers' intensity this weekend on CBS. Huge ball game. So will Tennessee match Pittsburgh's intensity on Sunday? Love or loathe? I love this out of Mike Vrabel because he knows the deal. It's a road game. It's in Pittsburgh. Look, that's a prideful bunch. I think Pittsburgh is done. I think Tennessee is going to win. But that ambiance going to be off the charts. There's a lot of seasoned veterans on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Heck, last time they played, they had that comeback for the ages against Minnesota. So he's making sure he gets his team ready emotionally. And I love what he's doing. Love him as a coach. And I love Tennessee to beat the Pittsburgh Steelers. Dak Prescott using talk of him being in a slump as motivation Sunday against the Giants. Love alone. I love this. I mean, wouldn't you if your boss were not 105.3 the fan of Dallas and said you were in a slump? I mean, also, Dak has the gift of going up against the New York football Giants. I mean, that's the remedy for any quarterback or any team that's in a slump. And look. I think the slump talk is overrated, overblown. We got into this hot and heavy throughout the week on Time to Shine. I still remember what Dak did on Thanksgiving on CBS against the Raiders. Prescott is tremendous. He hasn't played great the last couple of weeks. He was dreadful last week against Washington. But yes, matchup-wise and motivation-wise, it's going to be a big Sunday coming up for my guy, Dak Prescott. With Urban Meyer out in Jacksonville, James Robinson should actually actually see the field. So, Sunday will be James Robinson's time to shine. Love or loathe? Love, love, love. I mean, this is going to be the James Robinson revenge game. Not necessarily because he has any vendetta against the Houston Texans, but, you know, Urban will be on his couch, probably not paying attention. I mean, he didn't pay attention when he was coaching. James Robinson's a big-time player. He should be getting 20, 25 carries a game. Let's go. I think James Robinson is absolutely going to feast, and I think it will be his time to shine. With a win over the Baltimore Ravens on Sunday, the Green Bay Packers can clinch the NFC North. So, will the Packers win the division on Sunday? Love or loathe? I, I absolutely love it. It's Aaron Rodgers' world. We're just living in it, and... Listen, Aaron Rodgers has to be salivating here. Starting the film, when you look at who's in, who's out on defense for the Baltimore Ravens, and, you know, Rodgers is locked in. It's a huge game loaded with playoff implications. It's a big game and a big window for him for the MVP. Listen, they're in the driver's seat to get the coveted first round bye. They're going to win the division, which is a big deal with a victory. Love, 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 love the Green Bay Packers. Big coming up on Sunday. Rodgers with a monster game. Devontae Adams, too. Kevin Durant will cool off at some point. Love or loathe? Loathe. Despise this. 
Another stellar performance from KD last night. Carrying the Nets over the Sixers, 34 points, 11 rebounds, 8 assists in 39 minutes. He was so tough, so clutch, so dominant down the stretch of this one. Remember, still half the roster missing in COVID protocol. Look at these numbers. This is what you call a December to remember. I, I picked him preseason to be the MVP. He's going to be the MVP. Jokic has been great. Steph Curry's been on a different level. Kevin Durant will never slow down this season. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell for more videos.